therefore, Christianity is false. You know, um, one of the greatest difficulties that I see when talking with folks is this lack of, uh, of, of a grasp of how to use logic or how to argue effectively for um, one's position. Now, uh, I have to admit right off the bat that this is a problem that I see coming from both uh, Christians and atheists alike. Uh, Christians are not uh, exempt of this. And, and really, um, more and more, I encourage Christians to engage in the study of logic and, and logical reasoning. And, uh, you know, in the beginning, uh, John chapter 1 records, uh, was the word. And that word is the word uh, logos in, in the Greek. In the beginning was the logos. It's the same exact word, uh, actually, that we get the word logic from. And uh, we actually see in the Bible that we are obligated. It's it's actually a moral imperative that we uh, think God's thoughts after him and that we be logical uh, because God is logical. So we are really, we are morally bound um, to, to be logical people, to respond logically logically with things. And in fact, if we didn't respond logically, we couldn't even have intelligent conversation um, uh, between one another. Uh, we have to kind of channel in this, this immaterial reality, this, this, this reality of the laws of logic and, um, and understanding in order to be able to uh, understand things about the world, to be able to understand intelligently what we're trying to communicate to one another. And one of the um, uh, principal um, foundations of logic, especially formally logic, uh, formal logic, but uh, certainly unstated conclusions in informal logic, is uh, this idea of premises and conclusions. Uh, that is that uh, typically in an argument you will have any number of premises. Um, uh, you know, the most basic I think just have three um, in these hypothetical um, conditional statements. Uh, you have two premises, say, and a conclusion. So um, this can be very easily seen and probably one of the easiest yet most effective actual arguments for Christianity, uh, the cosmological argument, uh, more precisely the Kalam cosmological argument. Um, so for instance, uh, premise one of that argument is whatever begins to exist has a cause. Premise number two is that the universe began to exist and therefore the conclusion is uh, that the universe had a cause so that's very very easy to see but especially when you're just dealing in conversations you don't usually speak in these terms and so what you kind of have to do is is keep a lookout for where premises are are inserted into the conversation that lead to uh, conclusions, either stated or unstated, but without making the logical connection between the premises and the conclusions. So that is, when somebody makes an argument um, or raises an objection against what you believe, what you need to do, and you can do this um, in some ways, it's rhetorically powerful in some cases to um, actually uh, use this tactic against the opponent. Um, and, and again, you kind of have to be discerning as to when you want to do that. But in every case, in your mind, you should be working through these things. And you should um, state the connection between the premises and the conclusion in your mind to see if the conclusion actually does follow logically from those premises. So for example, um, the new atheists like to argue that religion is dangerous. Religion is dangerous. Let's just start with a very simple claim like that. I hear this all the time. Religion is dangerous. Well, number one, this is actually, um, um, depending on how you construe it, uh, with when they make the claim that religion is responsible for more deaths than atheism, that claim is demonstrably false. And I hear that particular claim um, all the time. So let's just disregard for now the fact that that's actually a false uh, premise anyway. But they argue that way, right? So religion is, is, is dangerous. Religion has resulted in millions and millions of deaths. And many times they'll use this um, 
to, uh, in a sense, argue against Christianity. That, well, maybe Christianity is not true because it's so dangerous, or uh, religion in general is so dangerous. So all you uh, must do in your mind is simply to make the logical connection. They have not stated the conclusion that Christianity is false, but you know that's their position. And furthermore, you know that that's what they're arguing for. So you need to think about this in your mind. Is there a logical connection between the premise, religion is dangerous, and the conclusion, Christianity is false? You do that by inserting the word, of course, therefore, right? So religion is dangerous, therefore, Christianity is false. Now, this is an insane argument. Putting it that way, nobody would actually, I don't think, ever argue that way. But this is what they're saying, perhaps without even realizing it. And certainly, those who are listening to them often don't look past the rhetorical force of their arguments to actually see if they are logically valid. And so, considering this, you can easily see that it does not follow from the fact that religions may indeed be dangerous, generally speaking. It does not logically follow to the conclusion that, therefore, Christianity is false. And this is just one simple example. You would be surprised, uh, at, at, if you really think about it, at the number of arguments that are pelleted against uh, Christian faith and against Christian belief that are uh, simply just uh, bald assertions, often with no evidence, and usually uh, without any consideration. Uh, and they are stated in, in such a way as if uh, as if to falsify the claims of Christianity. For example, uh, atheists often say, well, you're just an atheist uh, uh, like I am. Uh, I'm just an atheist about one more God than you are. And they offer this as some sort of grand argument that must discredit or undermine your belief, but simply insert the unstated conclusion. You uh, disbelieve or you believe in one more God uh, than I do or disbelieve in one less God than I do. Therefore, Christianity is false. Well, that doesn't follow at all from the premises. They're, they're completely unrelated. In logic, this is called a, a non sequitur. In fact, there are more logical fallacies in play here. Um, in the uh, instance of the first example I gave, where uh, religion was dangerous, therefore Christianity is false, that's actually also a fallacy of consequence. It's saying that because we don't like what could possibly be a, um, a consequence of something being true, um, therefore that thing is not true, right? So um, there's logical uh, fallacies in play here as well as just general um, mistakes in reasoning. And so learning to discern these things and especially uh, in uh, debates or in situations where somebody is looking to um, gain the acceptance maybe of the audience as a as a as, as sort of a rhetorical um, a device against you um, you can just simply bring this conclusion out into the forefront and it will immediately expose their faulty reasoning now remember you, you should do this in, in with, with meekness and fear as given to us in our classic apologetics verse for first uh, Peter 3 15 and Certainly we should do this with love and with Christian character, but we need to expose when people are using faulty reasoning because they claim to have good reasons to believe what they do and also to disbelieve in what we do, but oftentimes um, the conclusions that they uh, reach are quite unwarranted, uh, unjustified, and uh, certainly illogical uh, to start with.